Hi, my name is Bob Royer. In this short video, I'm going to show the layperson what to look for in buying a premium baby grand piano versus a promotional or cheaper baby grand piano. Don't go to the front of the piano and just look at a brand name and start looking around because a lot of the name brand pianos that you would recognize make a premium grade or, and a promotional piano. What you want to do is look at the back. So Jim, come on over here. The first thing I want you to look for, I'm going to show you four things, is a wide tail German design. So this wider tail is going to give you a bigger soundboard area. Number two is this aliquot bar right here. Aliquot is A-L-I-Q-U-O-T. It creates a harmonic overtone. So here again, it's this metal bar on this piano. It's right here in the treble area and it has a definite ridge that creates an ending. I'm going to come over here. Jim, let's switch places. This is how it works and this is very important. When I strike a key, the hammer strikes the string, the strings vibrate this bridge like a guitar or violin. The bridge then vibrates the soundboard. But what it is, is this kind of creates the major tone and this creates a harmonic overtone. It's subtle at first, but upright pianos don't have aliquot bar. I think I know two that do. So you want to hear that beautiful singing treble area that's created by that aliquot bar. The next is, first of all, so you have the white tail, the aliquot bar, and you want to hit right here. This, on the larger beam, you want to hit, it should have a real low, thuddy overtone. So this is 100% cast iron plate. It's a wet cast plate. And what that means is it's like it's created in a wet sand and clay. And it's, the, it's known as the, the stronger of the types of cast iron. The other is a dry cast plate that's kind of molded uh, in a dry heated. It's made very quickly, but it creates an overtone. You want that low thud, and that's what this is. Next of all, this is what you see around here is what they call an outer rim. They all look like this. Underneath here is a part called the inner rim and it's about two inches thicker and it's connected to this and it goes all the way around. That's what the soundboard is glued to. This is what the cast iron plate is bolted to. It does three basic things. It's overall strength, tuning stability, and also it reflects the sound producing energy that the piano makes and reflects it back into the soundboard so it keeps sustaining. The premium grade pianos, you're just going to have to look at the specifications, have a dense wood that absorbs the sound. This is a hard rock maple rim. Premium grade pianos have a harder inner and outer rim that reflects the soundboard. Once you have seen the piano from the back end, the wide tail, the aliquot bar, you just go ahead and bang on this and read the specs if you want. Then you want to come to the piano, and I'll keep this on. And don't be intimidated if you don't know how to play the piano. Some of the people who don't play have the best ears I've always found. The third note in is a C. It's a really good note to, to try. Now these are single strings. This has a dark, resonant, deep tone. I like it. Basically one third of the piano. I'm looking for that dark sound. This here again, you can just do this. I want to hear expression. I want to hear a rich tone. If I hit it soft, and I want to hear it keep sustaining. Now up here is this clear bell-like ringing treble sound. This is really nice. This is what I want on a piano. And that's why I've chosen a piano like this. This will last 30 seconds if I wanted it to.
So when a piano company has given you those four things, then it's made the commitment that it's not going to cheapen up hammers and the action and all that. Now, some pianos are brighter than others. We can voice the piano down. That's a little different issue. Um, so if you're a piano singer and you want a mellower sound, we can make this mellower. We can make it brighter if you're a jazz piano player or you're trying to pound through an orchestra. But the point is you're going to get a quality sound when you have those ingredients. This is a 5'3", measured from here to there, Hallett Davis. It's a very nice piano, small piano company, not a really big company. And this is in the $7,000 price range. I have an agreement with a lot of my manufacturers, so I can't tell you specifics, but I want to give you a ballpark, $7,000 uh, ballpark. And uh, this is a wonderful piano. Incidentally, anything under five foot will not give you a premium grade piano. They'll all be promotional. I carry, we carry four brand new premium grade pianos that are all uh, high quality right here is a Perzina and the headquarters of Leipzig, Germany. This is 5'9", you can tell the white tail. You can see the uh, aliquot bar here, hard rock maple rim. This has obel hammers. It's a fabulous piano, well priced. Here is a Broadman line of piano. And here again, you have that white tail design, the aliquot bar, the wet cast plate, and uh, Broadman is headquartered in Vienna, Austria. Hi, so this is a High Lund piano. Some people don't like the brand name, but you'll love the piano. This is incredible. It has a wide tail, German design. It has a wonderful, huge, dark sound. It has a slow close lid, which is absolutely incredible. If for some of you women who want to open and close. Now let's go see what a come to a promotional piano, what it looks like. So here is a promotional piano. And here again, you know, when you know how to do this, or once you really kind of key on what I've been trying to say, you really can just eyeball it very quickly. You can look at the end or the bottom of this piano, and the tail as I call it, and it's pretty narrow looking. Here you can see how it is a piece of felt right here. So there is no bar that is going to create an overtone. It's just going to be dead. Um, when you hit this, you hear a bongo. These are a little thinner and that's going to create a little over ring. So right off the bat, I know it's a narrow tail. I know, it's, I know it has a dense, uh, more of a dense wood, a thinner quality or not as good a quality inner and outer rim. But then I just play it anyway. I play the C. And I could play this incidentally. Like this. You'd probably get away with with the average person. But when you start... It just has that thuddy overtone. This sustains, but the tone's brittle. And it might be hard for you to hear it, but the overtone is wavy. And like that, most of the sound just died real quick. So it's going to be very inconsistent when you don't have that aliquot bar. I really don't like these pianos. They're kind of, a lot of people call them grand looking uh, instruments. Uh, it's not something you're going to, going to be fall in love with. So uh, I hope this video helped you as far as a small education on what to look for when buying a quality piano you're going to fall in love with. I, you can email me direct at Bob Royer, that's my name, B-O-B-R-O-Y-E-R -E at gmail.com. We're open seven days a week. Call me if you have any questions at all about any grand piano. I've been a dealer for 25 different piano lines. I've gone through 25 different factories. I know a lot about pianos. I'll be glad to help you. I don't care where you live. Uh, just give me a call. We're open seven days a week. Thank you.